In this edition of Track GT4, we're going to pull back the curtain on the inner workings of the company responsible for providing the thrills and excitement of the Gran Turismo franchise. Polyphony Digital is world-renowned for their innovative games. What makes these guys so good? Part of it is assembling the best talent around. The company started with four employees and now has well over 70. Employee number one is Kazunori Yamauchi, a man whose love of cars began seemingly just after his birth. And while there were some early thoughts of becoming an astronaut, his career path remained on the ground while retaining the love of speed and motion. In 1997, he created Gran Turismo and it revolutionized video racing. Refinements and improvements came with Gran Turismo 2 in 1999 and then GT3 A-Spec in 2001. The president of Polyphony Digital is now recognized around the globe, not only as one of the most innovative minds in the video game industry, but also as an important influence in the automotive world as well while his company is remarkable for both the games they make and the way they make them. Great efforts were made to develop an automotive feel for the workplace where the game gets made. An essential ingredient is cultivating an environment that accommodates the creative and time-consuming needs of video game design and development. Just to explain, each title takes roughly two years to develop. And the last six months within these two years is quite hectic. So many of our staff spend a lot of their time here at the studio. Therefore, I felt that the office or working space should be as comfortable, if not even more comfortable, than being at home. This comfortableness is the biggest concept of Polyphony Digital's development studios. The company's name Polyphony describes a workplace philosophy that listens to and mixes together many voices, from the programmers and designers to the artists and data collectors. The team members often share conversations with Kazunori and other team members, not in official meetings, but just normal day-to-day -day conversations. They often share opinions on which locations they agree on and what cars and course designs they like. My staff and I made sure everyone was comfortable with how they were going to approach and tackle this before they actually started building each of the courses. Now, all the team members share the same mindset. They've come to the stage where all the course design members will be able to pick out which areas are not working and which areas are good. The concept of balance coincides with the idea that any great advancement is made up of a series of small improvements. In the past, in the process of collecting data, because these courses are in-game, they had the allowance of measurements being slightly out of scale. But this time around, they made sure every measurement was exact. And so, in terms of accuracy, the team has made many, many improvements in the courses. This has led to a sort of a snowball effect where the team has continued to work on small improvements of the graphics engine, which taken all together, at the end of the day, has built up into a big revolution. Even when everyone's exhausted, being able to share these discoveries with the whole team is like magic. And that's what I love most about my job. Job satisfaction seems to strike a major chord at Polyphony Digital. Just ask the president. Obviously, I've always dreamed of becoming a race car driver. However, when I look at the bigger picture, what I do now is great. The experience I get out of doing what I do and still working very closely with cars is a dream job. And after all the hours and effort spent, what does Kazunori Yamauchi hope to achieve with GT4? Well, one of my objectives for actual players, once they finally get their hands on GT4, sit down, open the package, throw it in the PS2 and play, is to say, wow, incredible. The next version of Gran Turismo is on its way to blow your socks off. And we'll have the latest scoop. So check back here next month to track GT4. It's the drive to excel while outperforming rivals, the will to be the best. Winning. It's understanding that the extra effort, the scrutiny of detail, and a teamwork that blends individual talents are what separate the good from the truly great. When it comes to delivering the heart-quickening thrills and demonstrating the quick reflexes and decision-making needed to be a great race car driver, the undisputed leader of the pack is the Gran Turismo franchise. And while they have set the bar in terms of sales, it's the authentic aspects of the gameplay physics, the realistic models of the cars, and the spot-on design of the courses that keep the Gran Turismo racing game out in front.
It takes an unbelievable amount of time and effort to produce a game as data-intensive as the new Gran Turismo 4. The PlayStation Underground joined the innovative game makers at Polyphony Digital on several of their data-gathering expeditions to see what it takes to be the best. The person in charge of maintaining and even extending their lead is Kazunori Yamauchi, president of Polyphony Digital. An avid follower of Formula One and many other types of racing, Mr. Yamauchi began his quest to create a truly realistic driving video game in 1992. He produced Motor Tune Grand Prix and then altered the course of the racing genre with the Gran Turismo series. Kazunori explains the process of designing and developing the world's finest auto racing game. The photo shoot and the data collection are an important part of the creation process. The reason we collect data is not because without it we couldn't make the game, rather it's more to confirm the accuracy of the car we made in the studio, so we don't apply the real data directly to the game. For the photo shoot of the cars, we take a large selection of pictures, shots from four basic angles, diagonal shots, and others. We also do sound recordings of the actual cars. While Mr. Yamauchi oversees the entire process, there are specialists assigned to specific tasks. This is the area for taking photographs of the cars. My job is to shoot the beauty shots from many angles. I also manage the other photographers who also take photos. Additionally, when the 3D models of the cars are constructed, these photos are used as references and are also used to provide textures. In the new Gran Turismo 4, there will be over 500 different cars to choose from. And if you think that's a lot of data to gather, think about what it takes to map the over 50 courses the new game will feature. Using all types of technology, the team will measure virtually every nook and cranny of every turn, building, and bump down to the millimeter. All of these precise measurements go hand in hand with how the car drives. The physics engine of Gran Turismo 4 has been totally redesigned to create one of the most realistic driving experiences ever offered in a gaming console. In addition, we choose several of the cars and gather data. We measure the car's maximum speeds, record gravity forces, and assess their cornering abilities. Actual race car drivers are enlisted to provide information on driving, especially the more elusive feel of a course. I'd like to think that I can bring some extra insight to the game, um, where the, the feel of real driving translates. You know, I just love playing, and hopefully I can give good input to the guys that develop the game, then that'll, that'll make sense to the, the actual person playing it in the end. Well, racing driver, to stay. I'm going to evaluate the product from a race car driver's perspective. There's so much depth in real life racing. There's communication between the cars, communication between the driver and the car, and all that. So you really need someone who's experienced that in real life to translate it to the game. Gran Turismo is awesome. I mean, a lot of drivers use it to learn tracks before they go. Everything from you know, what gear they should be in in a certain turn or what exit speed they can expect when they get there. It just gives me you know, a better feel of what it's like to drive a road race car. Gran Turismo is so successful at creating the most authentic racing experience that people from every sector of the automotive industry want to be involved in the franchise. The automakers are realizing the importance of the, the marketing, the branding that they get within the games. Young enthusiasts are getting an opportunity today to actually drive some of the cars that the American public really came to know more through the Gran Turismo series than from seeing rally races in person or even viewing them on TV. While Polyphony Digital's president enjoys all the attention paid to his game, he always strives to focus on the original reason for creating Gran Turismo. First of all, I'm happy that we were able to work closely with car manufacturers and with pro race car drivers. At the same time, there's an increased risk that I'll forget the feeling I had when I originally created Gran Turismo, namely the sense of just another car owner with the enthusiastic emotions that users feel toward their cars. It's important never to forget the feeling from the user's perspective. Gran Turismo is a gift to all the people who love cars around the world. Even now, that hasn't changed. Check back here at Track GT Ford and find out about some of the new features and improvements that will be included in the latest and greatest version of Gran Turismo.
Gran Turismo has always been about automotive racing and car culture. Some of the newest advances in GT4 address the car enthusiast's passion for driving and the need to show off your cool ride in a beautiful setting. You'll now have a chance to be an international shutterbug with GT Photo Mode. When I released the first of the series back in 1997, there were two aspects to the game. One was the actual driving and the other had to do with watching the game with the replay mode. Photo mode adds another element to the enjoyment of watching Gran Turismo. Imagine traveling to 66 locations around the globe and directing your own photo shoot with any of the cars included in GT4. And these aren't just snapshots. The virtual camera and film you'll be using will have plenty of options and settings to get the perfect picture. Personally, I love cars, but I also love photography. Including a photo mode was actually part of my dream for the GT franchise. I wanted to make sure the player could use a professional approach with the photo mode. Players can change the lens and filters of the camera, adjust the depth of field, and create motion blur. They can also change film stock to get that special touch. I wanted to allow for all the possibilities that are available in real photography for the GT photo mode. After you've found all the right settings and clicked off some awesome photos, you can save them to the memory card in your PlayStation 2. Then try a slideshow on your TV or print out a color copy on a USB printer. With this new feature, GT4 continues to espouse the concept that there is much to enjoy about cars besides driving. And the great thing about Gran Turismo is you still get to do plenty of driving anytime you want and now you get to keep a photo album of your travels. We'll have more updates on the latest Gran Turismo offering as we continue to track GT4. As we've been tracking the release of GT4, the PlayStation Underground has tried to keep you up to date with all the inside info on the upcoming version of the world's foremost driving game. Gran Turismo continues to upgrade and create new features within the game. The team at Polyphony Digital always adds extra touches that keep their games fun and interesting. Here's some of what you can expect, starting with the human touch. Polyphony Digital has always had the idea that once we got the cars right, the next goal would be to improve the people you see in the game. We've been researching this for a long time. For Gran Turismo 4, we've used the physics engine to attempt a new technique for the animation of human movement. For example, previously, convertible cars were driven with the top closed. That was because we were not technically able to show the driver operating inside the car. In this version, the convertible cars will have a recognizable driver. Also, there are spectators beside the course. Before, they were like billboards. To carry that notion of cheering one step further, the GT4 player might want to tune into GTTV. Gran Turismo, the franchise, has been a combination of two main factors. One was the actual driving that players experienced, and one was the replays that the game provides immediately after each race, both of which are exciting, great fun, and very nice to look at. And there were many people who play a certain race with a certain car just because they want to see the replay. With GTTV, players don't have to worry about driving the car. They could be eating something or relaxing and still watch their own creation being driven by someone else on a live TV broadcast or replay. Or they could just drive the car themselves. Although Gran Turismo is a driving simulator that requires driving skill, we wanted to create a game which could be enjoyed by people around the world who like the cars but don't have the driving skills. If your idea of excitement includes ogling some of the great cars of the past, GT4 will include a museum feature where you can scope out some of the classics. If you want to see the classic cars of today, oftentimes you have to go to a museum exhibition. So, I thought it only natural to have a museum in the game for classic cars. From the historic to the modern, GT4 will have an improved artificial intelligence system that will help make the racing experience even closer to the real thing. For example, if you start to drift towards a competitor, their car will take evasive maneuvers. But cars will develop a memory. If you mess with them too much, they'll come after you. And we'll come after you if you don't check out track GT4 in the next issue where we'll have an update on the great new features in Gran Turismo 4.